Global Fight Talk. I'm your girl, Lisa Marie, and on the line we have Dr. Felipe Garcia. Doc is the founder of Doc Mouth Guard. I hope I'm saying that right. We have, on, we have him on the line, so he's going to correct me, of course. And we're going to talk about so many things, um, just about, you know, the, the fight scene and how he got started and how much he does so much for the athletes out there and for the community. Doc, what's going on? Hey, Lisa. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for, for coming on and just, you know, just chatting with me. And, um, you know, I've been following you for some time, I mean, for a long time. And um, I know, you, like I said, you've done so much for all the athletes. And um, and that's one of the things that I wanted, you know, to bring you on. And, you know, also you got, you know, you make mouth guards now. So, yeah. and, and I definitely want to talk about that and how that came along. But first of all, let's let, let's talk about um, you as a fight fan of, you know, just the 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 fight scene itself. Now I'm going to ask well, you a personal question. Okay. Sure. Boxing or MMA? Which one do you prefer? Hey man, I'm going to be very transparent with you. Boxing. Boxing, and, and why is that? Guy. You know, is it and, just and because could, it's been there for the, the longest? Uh, I've wrestled. I wrestled in college, and man, I'll tell you what, I have a lot of respect for that. Okay. And I boxed a little as a kid, and then I boxed as an adult. And I just, man, that wrestling is brutal. It, it really is. is. Jiu-jitsu to it me is, is like like chess. And right. boy, I tell you, I don't even get it. <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> it at all. Uh, but, uh, no, I'm a boxing fan. I'm a boxing enthusiast. And really, to be honest with you, I'm a combat enthusiast. I really respect those guys, man. It's, it's brutal training, brutal discipline. I admire anybody who goes through that type of uh, discipline and, and workout. It's amazing to right. me. Now, now, Doc, you know, everybody knows you as Doc. Yeah. You know, you're Dr. Felipe Garcia. Right. What exactly, what, kind, what, what field are you exactly in? Like, what do, do you exactly do? You know, so I am a medical doctor. You know, doctor. everybody knows you as doctor, but, yeah. you know, what type of doctor? Yeah, they go, hey, what, what's up, Doc? Uh, yeah. <laughs> most people don't even know what my first name is, and that's, that's kind of cool. Right. But, uh, so I went to medical school at Texas Tech University, became an MD, and I chose the field of physical medicine and rehab. So basically it's managing musculoskeletal disorders. Part of that includes sports medicine. Right. Uh, I also postgraduately took some more courses in nutrition and various other things for uh, sports medicine and physiology. So it falls right along the lines of working with athletes and various types of injuries. So I have a pain management clinic. I take care of uh, chronic and acute pain. Mm -hmm. And I so happen to love the sport of boxing and combat sports. So, man, that just fell into my hands. Right. Yeah, so I take care now, of I know, you know, you and I are Facebook friends, and I, I see you, you, you've worked with a lot of people, you know, one of them being Rafael Casillas, and I know you – you train over there at Reyes Boxing, and, you know, you've just been here and there, and I know sometimes you work at, at Title Boxing. So um, how is that, like you working with everybody, and you get to see all these great and up-and-coming athletes, and you also get to get in the ring and do some sparring. Yeah. How, how does that feel? So so what happened was, uh, like many of us, you know, we life comes at us pretty strong, and uh, I'd say about uh, 14 years ago, life came at me pretty strong, and I went through a little dark storm. And uh, being an ex-athlete myself, I kind of uh, was paralyzed. I didn't know which lane or what door to take. So oh, wow. I'm traveling down the highway one day, and I noticed this uh, boxing gym. It was called L.A. Boxing at the time. Okay. And I turned into it, and I walked in, and who, do, who comes to the door is Raphael. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, oh, my gosh, what, uh, well, about 12 years ago, I guess now. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a boxing club, very, very corporate, of course, uh, you know, a lot of bo boxing classes and so forth. So I said, you know, I think I'll give this a try. Well, my first class, man, I was hooked. I was hooked, and I was uh, in my mid-40s at the time, if you can imagine that. Yeah. So soon after that, we developed a fellowship, friendship, whatever you may want to call it, and I started taking lessons, and he's gotten me to a level where I can go spar, not just with anyone, of course, but I can go right. spar, feel comfortable, feel safe. In fact, I can teach the very basics to some kids. I'm not a coach. I never will claim to be one. Right. But now I've gotten to meet so many wonderful athletes, professional athletes, 
in both MMA and boxing, and it's such a treat for me. But that just kind of fell into my hands, and I, I really think that God guided me that way mm-hmm. and so that I could get out of this black storm I was in in my life. Right. And now I found a new fellowship, a new purpose, and it's really wonderful. It really is. I, I wake up every morning so enthusiastic about helping somebody. It really right. is nice. Doc, let me ask you this. You know, you said you, you know, you, you're at a point where you feel comfortable and feel safe sparring. And I know you said, and I'm not too sure how old you are. You know, with women, you don't ask women how old you are. Well, you, you can ask me, it. Lisa. Feel okay, free so that. And, and how old are you, if you don't mind me asking this? I'm uh, 58 years old. 58 years old. Okay. Now, my next question. You love boxing so much, and you spar, and you get to be around athletes and great trainers. Do you ever think at your age that you would want to compete and step in? Because they do have a master's division um, in Kansas City, um, Ringside World Championship. I've been there a few times when we took our team, and, you know, there's people in their 60s and 70s in their fighting and um and i know some some of the coaches and you know that that have a lot of amateur team and you know they also referee you know pro debut you know pro boxing fights and stuff they even competed um at ringside um tournaments do you ever think about that or has anyone ever told you about um doing something like that yes in fact um it's on everybody else's bucket list but mine (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they keep encouraging me. Uh, my my professional boxing trainer, by the way, is Rafael Casillas and has been for several years. And uh-huh. I respect that guy uh, so much in terms of his boxing knowledge and skill. And lately I've been working with uh, guys like Richard Best, who's well-known in the community as well. Right. And uh, they've taught me so much. And they all look at me and go, Doc, what are you wasting your time for? Go compete. You're good enough. And I, it does cross my mind. Um, at the same time, I, there's got to be something that moves me towards that direction, and I don't know what it's going to be. I just haven't made that decision yet. You know, I'm spread so thin here, and I know what you guys go through, Lisa, because I've seen you box, and I've seen you in your training camps, and I know what you guys go through. Mm-hmm. And, man, it <laughs> like, takes so much discipline. I'd have to put my tostadas away. I'd have to put my Cheez-Its away. (laughs) (laughs) And at this point in time, I'm having so much fun with it. And uh, I've I've competed before at a pretty high level. And, um, you know, it gets to the point where it's not so much fun sometimes, you know, and I want to continue having fun. So who knows? Maybe one day, maybe through this conversation, you may have just convinced me. Right. You know, I I always say to a lot of people that I come across or they come to our gym, and, you know, you always find that one person that has something special about them. And as a fighter and a trainer like you, I I never want to call myself a trainer. I just say, hey, this is what I've experienced, and I'm going to, you know, show you what I've experienced. I'm, I, I don't think I'm at that level to even call myself that because myself, I still am learning. So I don't like calling myself that. I'm just hey, I'm just giving you my, my, my boxing experience knowledge. And I always tell them, I said, look, do you ever think about it? And they said, yes. I said, okay. So if you think about it, why not do it and just say you did it one time? Because you never want to get to a point in life that, you know what, I should have when I thought about it. Now it's too late because, you know, I'm older or I have so many injuries or I just, you know, don't have time or anything. And I always say, if you ever thought about doing it, at least try it one time so you can sit back and say, at least did it. At least fought one time in my life. I think this was an interview about uh, Doc and Doc's Mountain Milk Guards, and now you're convincing me to compete. <laughs> no, I'm not. We're just, we're just talking, and this just so happened, and hey, maybe you should one day. <laughs> you know what? Now, it's, now, now you've challenged me. I think I'm going to have to go compete. I'm going to take up. You're going to you have know? to at least one time. You know, you, know, you know why I say that? Because 
eight years ago, um, you know, I used to kickbox. Uh, you know, I I started out kickboxing before I turned pro, mm -hmm. and I was an amateur kickboxer. And I started, I think my first amateur kickboxing fight was back in 2007-08. And I wanted to turn my meniscus. I did that for three years. And so I just did boxing just to stay in shape. And finally somebody said, you want to go pro, you want to do this? Because I tried to do the amateur scene as a boxer. And it just, you know, there, there's so much young girls. I'm older, and and I just could never, you know, find um, an opponent. And finally I right. said, you know what, someone told me what I just said. You just try it out. Just do it one time, and I wind up falling in love. So, anyway, you know, enough of that. And maybe you can think about that later on in life or later on tonight when you go to sleep. Well, listen, Lisa, you, you've, you've done more than that, girl. I've seen you fight, and you've got the fight in you. You're you're very very it. good Thank at what you. you do. Very Thank good you. at what Thank you do. You so much. But Thank I you. will give that a thought, and uh, it it has been in my mind. And people, every time I try and go, dude, you should go do this, man. And yeah. I, you're right. Absolutely, no one should have any regrets. And yeah. I just may have to think about that. Well, you know what, Doc? I I know that you've you've done I you know some free physicals, you know, for a lot of athletes. You've done my physical, which I've really, really appreciate that. I, I know that as a as a fighter, you know, a lot of these fighters don't have the income to do, um, you know, the medicals that are required by state as a professional athlete to do. And, you know, there's some people that are, you know, blessed because they have a good job and they, and they have insurance that they could do these, you know, medicals. Mm -hmm. And um, But then there's others that are not so blessed and don't have insurance. And here you are, Doc, giving out free physicals, you know. And the only thing you require is like, hey, just donate, you know, a few bucks, you know, to a charity. And mm -hmm. um, how awesome is that? And I remember when you did that and you, and you gave free physicals for uh, a, promo a local promoter. And I was like, man, that is awesome and that's so awesome that you that you do that for a lot of the guys and that has to take a lot of um heart and understanding for athletes and so let me ask you this what 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 made you just say you know what i'm going to give out free physicals you know lisa um that's the least i can do yeah and i was told a long time ago you can't keep what you have unless you give some of it away mm -hmm. and i have been so blessed over the years uh, in many ways, not only by the fellowship of combat sports, but influenced by so many people, and that's the least I can do. And I enjoy talking to these guys, so it's it's really not work at all for me. Right. It uh, it brings you know happiness to my heart, and um, I I'm willing to help these guys out as much as they can. And you're right, you know this. This sport requires so much of their time that they can't really work full time, for instance, or uh, they oftentimes don't have the funds, their families don't have the money, and right. that's the least of their worries. My, my main concern is that they're safe and um, that they're fight ready, they take good mm -hmm. care of themselves, and they shouldn't have to worry about paying a doctor to do an exam. Right, right. Well, for, for me, too, I really appreciate it. I know there's so many athletes that do appreciate it. Now, let's talk about this, the mouth guards, dog yeah. mouth guards. How did Absolutely. that come about? Um, I mean, obviously, it, it just kind of goes with everything that you're doing and you being around, you know, the fight game, like I said. How, how did that come along? How did that come along, and when did that start? You know, I'm glad you asked that question because um, I had no intention of ever – having a sports gear company whatsoever. But it came mm -hmm. to a point where I wanted a custom mouth guard. And so I went to my dentist, and he said, I don't make them. I said, I can, I can do your impressions, but I don't make mouth guards, so you'll have to go to a dental lab. I go, I will? You don't make them? He goes, no. So I searched and searched, and there's a lot of great companies online out there. And mm -hmm. so I finally chose one, and I went ahead and ordered one. Um, nothing wrong with it. I loved it. Um, what the missing link for me was there was no communication like, hey, how'd it turn out? How'd you like it? Right. Um, like I needed some small adjustments. Nobody reached out. And I said, you know what? This is an injustice for me. I don't really 
I, I don't really care for somebody not following up on how things turned out for me, especially as a professional athlete would demand that. So I said, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. I started doing some research, and before I knew it, I had dentists, dentist collaboratives, uh, dental vendors at my office <laughs> looking at this, and before you knew it, yeah. I was involved, and I went to school, learned how to do some of this, and and um, there are so many great mouth guard companies out there. I would never say anything bad about them, but what the missing link was was the customer service. And right. so I have a mission statement, and my mission statement is to take care of my local fighters face-to-face, right. and if they need anything, adjust it with their mouth guards they can. If, they, if something's wrong, if they don't like it, their money's back. They're insured. I'm insured. And I really like that. And so... We opened this up, and before you knew it, you know, we're, um, we're making mouth guards. And right. uh, we're, we're having lots of fun doing it, and we're doing it right, and we're always making it better and trying to improve it. And um, we're not trying to do anything different than other than create awareness of protection and how a wonderful custom mouth guard could improve your game. It really can. So, that's so, Doc, how, it's, like, it, it's, it's like one call does it all. You need a mouth guard? Do you need a physical? Just come to Doc. <laughs> Dr. Felipe Garcia can do it all for you. Yeah, if you hurt yourself, come see him too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And you also provide, you said, nutrition. Um, you, you do that as well. My, did, yeah. I, did I hear that right? Uh, that's correct. Um, you know, I'm not a nutritionist, and I, and I want to make sure people understand that I'm not a nutritionist, but part of my functional medicine training includes nutritional knowledge. So, um, And as an ex-athlete myself, I know what weight cuts can do, and I just don't believe in weight cuts, really. I think a professional athlete should manage his weight 365 right. days around the year. But they I don't, agree. and I'm a human being, too, and I know that that mm-hmm. um, just doesn't happen that way. But what I try to do is with these guys is I try to change the way they think about food. And I think knowledge is key. Some guys don't even know what a protein is, you know, what a high glycemic carb is, what a carb load is. So I took on Casey Ramos, the wizard in right. Austin. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, he was one of her, my, I wouldn't want to call him client because I don't charge these guys anything. But I worked with him and... Um, he now, of course, is 20-0 and 0 undefeated. He walks eating to the scale. He never really oh, wow. has to cut weight. And this was just basically teaching him how to eat right throughout, staying nine pounds within weight. God, that would be so awesome. We walked uh, Roberto Marikin. We walked him to the Rigondeau fight to weigh in at 118. I'll tell you what, that was a challenging one because he's mm-hmm. a tall kid, but yeah. he managed that very well, and he got down to 118, and we worked with him every day on teaching him on, on what and how to eat, what supplements to take, what supplements not to take, and um, wow. he made it. So people come to me for advice like that. Now, <clears throat> I don't advertise that because I'm not a new one to say, hey, you know, I'm, this is what I offer and this is my service that I do, but... Um, we offer it in the clinic to just the general public, and really, it's just change the way you think about food. And it's so do difficult. You ever think of, yeah. Do you ever think about giving a clinic? As a matter um, of fact, I, you know, I have given classes here in my center, where I had a few sports guys out. I've had Paul Ayala out. If Raphael's listened to me talk a little bit, but. Uh, we have thought about taking this and going to gyms and talking to coaches, teaching the coaches a little bit about it, because that's where it starts. And then, right. uh, you know, maybe even reaching out to parents and uh, reaching out that to people. That would be so awesome. I would love to attend yeah, one of that would classes. Be, that would be some I would really love to do. And uh, there's more to it than people think, you know, everything from cortisol levels to insulin. And we don't want to bore right. people with that, but we just want to t- teach them the basic. This is how your body behaves when you're not eating correctly. Right. You know, and this right. is why you plateau and so forth. So on, so. I mean, I definitely would love to take that class. You know, this is my last year of fighting, so I'm mm-hmm. going to try to be as active as, active 
as I can, as much as my body will allow me to, you know, right now I've been dealing for the past two years, um, Achilles problems. Oh, so my, yeah. yeah, so my, my, uh, my kidneys won't, you know, won't allow me to do so much, but, you know, I try oh, bless your as much heart. as I've I can. i had that problem myself. Yeah, and um, thank, thank God they haven't torn. <laughs> Don't care. <Carol. I'm>, yeah, <laughs> thank God I haven't. So right now they're just in pain, and sometimes it's hard uh, for me to move. And, well, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty bad Lisa. because, yeah, it gets pretty bad to the point where my calves lock up. That's how bad it gets. Well, so, I had a Keely stand anyway. tear back in the day, so it's not fun, I trust trust me. Yeah, I, I bet. So where can athletes find you? Um, I know you're on Facebook. I know you have a Facebook page. So let's talk about that, all your social media that people can find you, and let's talk about pricing. And, you know, sure. cu- you know I know that it's, it's just a, just a gen- overall general pricing, and, you know, you, you, you can – customize their moth guard to however they want it. So mm-hmm. let's talk about that. Absolutely. Well, uh, for the moment, you know, we started out with um, social media. Uh, you name it. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, um, LinkedIn. You know, we have various social media avenues where people can find us, and we're mm-hmm. under Doc's Mouth Guards. We are currently, actually, today, I called my website guy to start uh, developing our website. And that's the key is not growing something too fast that you can't promise, and then before you know it, you can't deliver. But uh, right. we have a friends page, and then we have a page that people can like. And what we post there, of course, is the newest and grooviest of mouth guards that we make. and. We shout out all our fighters. You know, we really appreciate the fighting community here. We highlight boxing gyms and, um, you know, anything that we can do to promote the community here. We have such a great fighting community here. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've had uh, an opportunity to to retain some great ambassadors for our Mouth guards recently, Johnny Hendricks, as you know, is fighting Saturday. Right. I, I, I uh, saw a picture on that on Facebook. He came and um, mm-hmm. really nice, super guy, super, super mm-hmm. nice, very, very appreciative of everything we can do. Of course, uh, the main event, Samuel Clarkson. Right. Roberto Medellin, you name it. The list goes on and on. We've been able to uh, reach out to them, and um, we want to make sure, first of anything, that they're happy with the product and the customer right. service. And thus far, we've not had any big complaints, and uh, we want to make sure that these guys are fight ready and ready to go. That's and awesome. And so they can now, find us I know, on all I know, those. Yeah, I know that you're all over social media. Do you ever do like a live Periscope or Facebook Live when you have an athlete that comes in to get a custom mouth guard? You know, we have not done that, but we have a videographer uh, James mm-hmm. Stokes did a real nice video that I, I sponsored to Mark De La Rosa, who everybody knows out there, by the way. Right. Uh, I sponsored him on his last fight, and part of that sponsorship included um, walkout T-shirts in a, in a journey video that we did. I saw that. That was an awesome video. Yeah, that was an awesome video. And, um, you know, we came up with some ideas now going forward that uh, maybe how some of these sponsors could use their money wisely. Um, by utilizing some of the things that these fighters could benefit from in the future. Wow. Like Mark could still, you know, use that video for marketing purposes. And as you know, man, today, the combat business, you have to be a marketable fighter. Not only do. do you have to be good, but you have to be marketable. And so, um, but we have not done that Periscope deal, or we have not gone live on Facebook. See, these are the things that I'm still learning uh-huh. And my assistant, uh, Hector Saucedo, by the way, people know him very well. He is such a great kid. He came to me just through a blessing, really. And um, he was a little lost out there and couldn't find a purpose. And I said, hey, I'm going to give you a chance. And he has proven to be just a blessing for me. He is my... That is a sweet kid. I, I, I met him. Mm-hmm. Um, he came over to our gym. Um, the day that Samantha came over to do some sparring before she made her pro debut. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he was there, and um, I met him, and he talked about 
um, his past, um, you know, about his life and, and how he came about working, um, you know, with you guys and stuff. So um, very, very nice, nice young man. And, mm-hmm. and it, it seems like he has a great shoulders, you know, great, you know, head on his shoulders. And he just seems great. Like his vision is, is big. And um, I know um, we talked about my, you know, our son and, um, and so he, you know, sympathized and, you know, we just had a great conversation. He, he's such a sweet kid. Yeah, he really is a stellar guy. And he, he is the ambassador to all my social media pages. Okay. Um, you know, I, I can't spend most of his time putting things on social media. He knows the lingo. He knows what to hashtag. I wouldn't know where to begin. But, you know, right. he knows all that stuff. And uh, he's got it all set up. But he's part of my business model. And that is... Awesome. As we grow, we want to employ young men and women who are having difficulties in life, in the academic arena, home environment, or with their own personal growth. Right. And uh, Hector is a prime example of somebody who came off the street, met me, came to work for Doc's Mouth Guards, and he's making it grow. I'll take some of the credit for it, but what I tell you, without him, this would not be possible. That's awesome. That's definitely, definitely yeah. awesome to hear, um, you know, that. I mean, you know, I remember when I inboxed and said, hey, Doc, I said, um, you want to do an interview? And the first thing you said is, yeah, um, what, do I, what, what do you need? Do you, do you need something? What can I do? And I'm like, Doc, you, you do so much for the community. <laughs> it's just chit-chat. <laughs> uh, that's just my personality, Lisa. I know, and I was like, let's just chit-chat. Let's just talk. How about just a great conversation? <laughs> but well, yeah, I was, that, that, I was that, flattered to hear that. Yeah, that that was awesome. Now I know that when we were messaging each other, you said that you also do where um, you sponsor a fighter with a mouth guard. Um, and how does that work? I mean, do they have to? Is, is there a a list that they have to go through? Do you pick somebody out? How does that work? Um, you know, I. You know, I wish I could give all of these things away. Uh, I really yeah. would. I, I'd love everybody to have one. Um, I think they they should have some. Well, I don't have any criteria, man. Like I said, everybody should deserve one. Um, but um, you know, Mark uh, is a hard worker. I know him. In fact, uh, he's been so kind to me. He let me spar with him, and I, that was a treat and so forth. You know, he's beat the crap out of me. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> um, point is, is um, you know, we we don't have any specific criteria on who gets sponsored and who doesn't. Right. Uh, I just feel it in my heart, like who is going to be loyal and who who's going to be taking good care of their community when they get a little older. Who's right. going to be giving and um, on this last sponsorship with Mark, I said, hey, Mark, I just want you to do one thing for me. He says, anything, Doc. And I said, continue being a beacon of light for those kids. And he says, you got it. And, you know, if any fighters out there influencing their kids, influencing children to follow them, uh, I want to be like Mark. I want what Mark has. Those are the kind of guys that I like to sponsor. I don't care if they're champions okay. or not. Right. As long as they're hard workers. That's awesome. Well, Doc, let me ask you. Um, I mean, I've asked you so many questions, so I guess I need to quit. Let me ask you. But let, let's, let's have some fun with this interview, okay? Sure. So let me ask you this. Your favorite fighter, not local, just favorite fighter. Favorite, um, I'd have to say... Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Okay. Um, biggest celebrity in, in the fight game that you met? Bob Arum. Um, I don't know. This might get personally mean. I want to ask this, answer this question. <laughs> your favorite local fighter, upcoming prospect local fighter out of Oh, my gosh. Area. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. <laughs> All of them. Good answer, good answer, good answer. <laughs> Everybody brings them to the table. Hey, I'll, tell you yeah. who's, I'll tell you who's been really explosive real, lately that I really enjoy, and I have a lot of faith he's going to 
he's going to climb real quickly is is the main event. I'm very impressed. With, yes, uh, he, he's, how, he's killing the he's he's killing the competition. Yeah. He the, really the is. Up and coming prospects that they think they have on their uh-huh. hands. Sam Alex is knocking them out. You know that, that's good and bad because now nobody wants to fight him. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that, that's a good and bad thing. Yeah, you're definitely um, right. There's, there's so many um, good good fighters out there, good little boxers, skill. Um, what really makes them all stand out differently is, is their personalities and what they do and what they do for others and how they help and how they influence other people. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite local fighters um, is Roberto Marikin. Mm-hmm. He's just a That's super, a super nice times. guy. Yeah. Very giving yeah. and generous and just just a good fighter and uh, goes with the flow and uh, very honest and transparent. I like that. But there's yeah, so many. There was so you put me on the spot yeah, with that I, one, man. I, I know, I know. That's just a, let's have some fun. <laughs> if there was anything that you could change, if there was anything that you could change, in the boxing community or the fight game itself, what would it be and why? Well, um, it has its goods and bad. It has its positives and its negatives. You know, the positive is that it, if you look at how many young men and women have been saved through the sport of boxing and MMA, it's, the, the numbers are just incredible and how their lives have turned around, whether or not they've continued the sport and how they're in school now and become young, fine young men and women. That's the positive. The downside to it is that it, boxing and MMA have some stigmas attached to them. You know, the badass stigma, bad boy stigma, tough stigma, um, unfortunately the drug culture, and um, I think that's rapidly changing, though. I think a lot right. of these coaches are becoming aware, hey, man, let me see your report cards, let me make sure you're going to school. You can't box if you don't do this and that. Mm-hmm. And um, you can't box if you do this. I don't think it used to be that way. But it's more and more now I see where the community is, is, is promoting these guys to stay in school, to continue school. Uh, one of my favorite stories is always, uh, of course, uh, Jin Yu Fry has a master's yeah. in business administration. That's very admirable. Casey Ramos, he's a senior in college and a top-ranked boxer. That's not a small feat. Right. And more and more right. you're seeing these guys do things like this. And uh, so that's the positive of boxing. I think it has saved so many of these kids from getting in trouble and staying out of trouble. And yeah, there's and, and a I wonderful boxing. I definitely boxing agree with that. And you guys have a nice gym out there, man. I tell you, you you can see it. People come and go. Yeah. People come and go yeah. all the time. And um, you have probably turned uh, people's lives around completely just with that sport. There's, yeah, there's this one kid we had. We 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 took him in. Uh, like an, about nine months ago, he's been with us for almost a year. And actually, my Darwin, my husband, he he talks at the Metro School where kids okay. get in trouble. And um, so he, him, another friend of him has a youth program where they speak to the kids, you know, about staying out of trouble, about positive, you know, doing positive things with their lives. And he met this one kid through there. And um, so he came to our gym, and um, he was having a very hard time, and they changed him around. His grades, you know, are, weren't so good. Now they're better. He's staying out of trouble. He no longer has to do Saturday school. Matter of fact, he's going to a better school for gifted kids. Good for and um, so, yeah, he's completely changed his whole life around so i do agree you know um fighting does save a lot of people um from the streets that that been in trouble because the stigma for mm-hmm. boxing at least is it's considered a poor man's sport mm-hmm. and so a lot of these boxers believe the only way out their outlet is through fighting mm-hmm. right that's the stigma the only way to get out of your situation or from being broke 
a few fights. And I, I still hear it to this very day that boxing is considered a poor man's sport. And MMA isn't. So, so that's why you get these rough edge kids, you know, that, that are from the streets or, or broken homes. And I'm not saying every last one of them, don't get me wrong, but then, you, you know, you do have the majority that, that, um, that, that, that comes from that background. But, yeah, yeah, yeah so, you know, moving along, I, I, I want to ask you um, this, this other question, I, you know, because we can get in that conversation and we could. Oh, yeah, we can get stay on. It, it, that, you know, that's, that's a I very. Know my, when I was a kid, I'll say this. When I was a kid, my local Boys and Girls Club saved me. You know, it turned yeah. me around. And uh, it was through boxing and wrestling that it did it. Now, did I continue doing that sport? No, but it changed me. You know, it really did. Taught me yeah. a lot. Good mentors. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't have to fight, you know, because I, 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 do, I do have, you know, a, I have a BA. And um, this is something I just fell into because Derwin, you know, he, he's, he, he's been fighting all his life. And so you usually wind up doing what, you, what, what your spouse does, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and so I wind up just doing it too. And, <laughs> and, and I didn't have to, but it's not like I didn't grow up like that either. Uh-huh. But, you know, it, I love it. I always say, before I say I'm a fighter, I always say I am a fan. I am a huge, 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 huge fan of boxing. I love MMA. Sometimes I have to cheat on boxing. <laughs> and I feel like MMA is my, my uh, as they will call it, my, my, side, my side piece that I cheat on when, when I'm not watching boxing. But let me ask you this one question. Women's boxing, mm-hmm. women's MMA, okay? The rise in women's MMA is very, very big. Absolutely. The women's boxing isn't, and um, and a lot of women's boxers are going into MMA just because of the fact that the respect that women don't get in boxing. I've always called it myself um, the good old good old boy, <laughs> you know, uh, a sport, and um, you don't see women on TV, you know, not, not like back in the days when there was Ann Wolf, Layla Ali, Kathy, Kathy Long, um, Lucia Riker, you know, those women paved the way, but they no longer on TV, you know, I and women's that. boxing is you, either on local. And if you are on, you know, uh, on a big card, you'll never be on, you'll never have a TV spot, even if it's a, a title shot, mm-hmm. right? Totally you will never be, you, you will never be on TV, and if it's a title shot, you will get <laughs> no more than five thousand dollars, and that's the that's the, the truth on it. No matter if you're undefeated, that's just how how it how it goes. Do you enjoy women's boxing? Very much so, and it's such a tragedy, I think, uh, not to place those women up there. But um, I mentioned earlier in our interview that. Unfortunately, this combat business has become an entertainment business. Mm -hmm. And we must admit that uh, if you're not a boxing enthusiast and you don't really understand boxing, boxing may not be as exciting to watch as it would be MMA. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have two women boxing, and if you don't have an appreciation for boxing in general, you're not going to get that audience. Now. I'm, I'd be front row if it was a woman's boxing on TV. You know, mm-hmm. I'd be there watching them, um, you know, you name it. And you would too because you're an enthusiast. Yes, definitely. But definitely. why MMA is getting all the publicity is because they're doing a good job of marketing these fighters. Mm-hmm. They're really doing a great job of the entertainment business. Now, how long that will last, I don't know. I think they're doing a great job of it, but I, that's why I think a lot of women who box or kickbox are going to MMA because they know that they may get some visibility. Right. And because it's it's all about the entertainment, and people, although may not know anything about MMA, will sit down and watch it. And there's nothing like watching two women go at it in a cage. Right. Right. I mean, well, you I know, to, like Holly Holm. I nope. it that way, but that's what, <laughs> that's what the people want, right? <laughs> Women. Exactly. You know, not not too many people knew about Holly Holm 
No. You know, when before, prior. But I've known Holly Holm because, you know, of course, I, you know, even though I started kickboxing. Sure. My, 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 my professional career was in boxing, like Holly Holm. Holly Holm, mm-hmm. she started off as a kickboxer. Her professional career was in boxing. So I followed her um, probably two years into her boxing career. And um, no one knew who she was when she, you know, transitioned over to MMA. And I'm like, she's nothing new to me, you know. Exactly. But and that, that's, that's crazy because she, she was big where she was from, Albuquerque. But now she's all over. But she's, a, she's like a 16-time world champion and nobody knew her, all, you know, around the world like they should if it was like uh, Bernard Hopkins, Oscar De La Hoya, Mayweather, who are, you know, world champions, you know, Tyson. They didn't know who she was until she got into MMA, which is very sad. And, again, that's another conver- long conversation. Yeah, it and, is um, <laughs> but I think if you look at the history of boxing, it was exclusive men. It was exclusive mm-hmm. to men. If you look mm-hmm. way back in the day, you know, that's, it was exclusive to men. And as women, as women have entered the boxing scene, I have no doubt in my mind that someday it will, it will have a stronger women's presence. But for the time being, MMA is really pretty young. It really is a yeah. pretty young sport if you really think about it. Immediately women were introduced pretty rapidly. So they find more visibility there. And um, but it's really sad that that um, you know these big promoters Bob Arum and some of these others won't place these women up front. I bet they'd have a big audience. You know what's so crazy? Because Bob Arum used to promote women's boxing because he huh. had Mia St. John. He used to manage Mia St. John, and everyone knows Mia St. John. Yes, of course. And um, she um, he used to manage her, and she would get those title fights. You know, I'm going to title fights, those TV fights. And um, he, I think he also managed, um, don't, don't quote me on this, but um, Christy Martin. And so um, that's why they were, you were able to see women on TV back then, you know. But back then, women were knocking each other out. So Absolutely. there's a lot, you know, like, like Ann Wolf. Oh, my God, she's yeah, beast. That, and she is a yeah. She's she's scary, you know. You know, my husband and her are real, real good friends, and and um, you know, I've interviewed her, and I've she also, also interviewed. Has she has a big heart. Yes, and I also be, interviewed her rival, and um, Layla Ali, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, that that conversation was was pretty crazy. Oh, but, I wanna, man, you're you're doing so well, man. I'm so proud of you. Uh, thank you so much. You I know, wanna... one thing I always said if. Once I'm done fighting, um, it doesn't mean I'm completely gone. I want to stay in, you know, whether Absolutely. it's you know, You're such teaching a or, yeah, you know, just teaching or giving some advice, my experience, some knowledge, or even if it has to do with media. You know, just yeah. like you, Doc, you know, I, I love to give back and, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, that's just me. And um, yeah, I, just... I, I'm, I'm a huge boxing fan. I'm boxing fast. I'm a huge, huge box. I'm a boxing <laughs> fanatic. Are. Yeah, I always I, say I'm a I fan first this, before I'm a fighter. When I saw your um, your promotion, your your name, I went, "Who is this person? Man, she's getting a hold of some good people." Uh, is this Lisa? My Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, you come, girl." You know, I, yeah. I am just so happy for anyone who's out there doing something good for the community, and um, you know, hopefully this will go eventually viral for you. And it sounds like it already is. And I'm, I'm, so I'm hoping, and, and for you. yeah, and, and that's what I, I, I wanted to do. I, I got a, I got a team. I got a team all over the place because I think big. I don't want to think local. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to cover media just in the local area. I got people in Vegas, California, North mm-hmm. Carolina, Virginia, DFW area, Austin, to cover media. And, um, you know, our, yeah, so, I mean, it's up and coming, and I've been doing it for a while, but now this is my little baby, and, you know, I get to do whatever I want with it, so I'm, I'm hoping that it's successful, just like you with the doc mouth, mouth guards. Well, <laughs> you know, we no always want to be... There's no doubt yeah. it's going to be successful. If you continue, I, I, yeah. continue having that passion like you do, it will be successful. 
You know, I appreciate and, um, that. I just take it like you, I'm sure. Where this is going to take me, I don't know, but I know where it took me today, and it took me to you. Yeah, definitely. You know, you and, know uh, I, I love to talk about boxing. So. Who knows yeah. where it's going to take me tomorrow, but it's taking me to some wonderful places. It really has. Yeah. Now, it's also going to take you somewhere else. So before we wrap this up, let's talk about your cut man debut and who, <laughs> who, who yeah, and um, who's this person that you're going to be working the corner, working okay. for? So um, there's a CKO fight that's over, being held over at the, uh, it's a black tie event at the mm-hmm. museum, the Flight Museum uh, mm-hmm. by Love Field. And that's going to be on the 18th of February. It happens to be a Thursday. Okay. So a good fight, two title fights. Uh, yeah. Good local fighters are fighting. Tony Lopez out of Reyes. Eduardo out of Reyes is fighting. Nacho's making his pro debut. Uh, Jimenez is fighting. Ray Jimenez, yeah. Ray Jimenez. I mean, a really good card. Um, so I was talking to Vince. I always ask him if he needs anything because I know he had a few guys he was fighting. I call him, hey, Vince, you need anything? You know, I'll order for you, tape, whatever you need. He goes, no, Doc, you do enough. I've got everything. I said, you sure? I said, I, when he asked me, I said, do you need anything? I said, man, you know, one day I'd like to be a cut man. Maybe you can teach me how to do that. I've mm. got my second license on. He says, are you kidding me, Doc? No. I said, well, hell, you want to make your debut? And that's how that happened. How exciting is that? So through Vince's blessing, he's allowing me to do that. And I feel very confident with what I'm doing. It's kind of like being a trauma doctor in the emergency room. You mm-hmm. take care of a wound, and I feel very confident. And now that I've been in the ring myself and I can recognize certain things, that's a plus. Yeah, definitely. And definitely. Um, I know how to keep my mouth shut. I'm not a coach. I'm not a trainer. I'm there to do my job. You just might be the next stitch. <laughs> Who knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I'm, I might see you on Showtime or HBO Box and Showtime after dark, and I'm like, hold up, wait, is that Doc over what? there? <laughs> is he wearing that funny cap with all those buttons on his head? What the heck? <laughs> but what's going on with He's that? He's 85 years old. My God, when did that happen? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you know what, Doc? I really appreciate you taking the time. It's always an honor and pleasure to talk to you, not just about, you know, what you're doing, but life in general, boxing. You know, that's why we call it Global Fight Talk. It's just not about the fighters. It's just, just talking about fighting itself, life itself. So I always enjoy our conversation. And um, is there anybody you want to shout out? I know uh, we talked about all your social sites. So let's just give that information out if there's a phone number, website, or whatever, and just um, give you a shout-out. You bet. So um, social media, of course, the uh, biggest one that we use out there is, is Facebook. We're um, Doc's Mouth Guards. And um, you can always contact us at um, 817-632-5000. That is the main office. And then Hector is my assistant. And he will always be there for you. Just ask for him, and he'll take care of you. He'll schedule your appointments. He'll walk you down. One of our pages has a film that shows the whole process of what it would take and how it evolves from the conception of the time you come in to the time you get your mouth guard. Um, Instagram is popular. You can see some of our latest uh, models there, and it's Doc's Mouth Guards, Instagram. And then, um, you know, on my page, um, I just offer nutritional and spiritual advice. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I uh, post some videos of me sparring occasionally and me working out. And I'm, I just really want to inspire people. Like, it's never too late. It's never right. too late to get out there and do whatever you want to do. And so, and, um, and, and right now, you look like you look like you're enjoying life. Oh and that's my goodness! Thing about it. I'm so blessed. Yeah. I am yeah. really blessed. I can't tell you, um, and I and I really am. I, I have um, a blessed life. I, I, I'm every morning I get up. I'm I surrender to God, and I mm-hmm. thank Him for getting me up. And if you can't humble Definitely. humble yourself with that, you can't you can't be a humble person. Period. Yeah, you gotta but, give thanks. 
But you can contact us through those social media. And, and people know me. Hell, they can just contact me, period. And right. uh, we'll help them out with that. But I, I want to I thank um, a few people who's really uh, helped us out a lot along the way with our mouth guard business. Uh, Tony Cabello has been a really good supporter of ours, and I, and I want to thank Tony for doing that for us. He's been really good. Uh, Rafael Casillas is another person who I really need to thank. Vince Reyes, Joe Fritas, uh, all those guys up there have been good supporters. And most recently, Richard Best, he's uh, looked at our quality and he's enjoyed that for his fighters as well. So I want to thank all those guys. And Lisa, I can't be any happier for you, man. You're doing great. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you. Well, you know what, Doc, thank you so much. I, I could sit here and talk to you all night, but i got to get home. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> and, you know. I do, too. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Again, this is Global Fight Talk. I'm Lisa Marie. And, of course, better known as Doc, but it's Dr. Felipe Garcia. For those that don't know his name, because <laughs> when I was introducing you, I was like, yeah, this is Doc. This is you. Hold on. <laughs> I was like, okay, because I'm so used to calling you Doc. But, hey, I, had, I had so much fun, Lisa. This was yes, really fun. I, me too. I appreciate it. Well, you, you have a blessed night, and okay. um, hopefully we could do this again. Let's do it. Oh, definitely. All right, All Doc. Right. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Have a good evening. All right. You Bye-bye. too. Bye. Bye.